Hey guys, black screen for the moment because uh, we haven't shown the screen yet. I'll just show this. I'll just show the screen. Okay, so this is what we're doing today. Uh, I think it'd be a cool series for me to cook in the lab some builds utilizing some of the artifacts in the game. To preface, before the hard hats enter the chat, these are not the best builds. These won't ever be the best. They might become the best builds. Who knows? I am not a genius. I am a scientist. And in the lab, I will present my hypothesis on some builds to maybe inspire other scientists to go forth and explore the deep beyond. Okay? This is what that is. Uh, you'll see these builds be like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll try it out. See if it works for you. Who knows? But I will explain why I chose what I did choose, as that's the whole point of a hypothesis and it's up to you whether you like it or not so that said i think we're going to do three of these per video and i'd like to do more so if there are weapons and armor combinations that you'd like to see a build for uh go ahead and tell me in the comments below engagement drives you know uh viewers so that's how that works right but uh with that said i have three that i have pre-picked out that i kind of cooked up a little cooking some small cooking happened here in this chair Okay, and then we'll go over that. We'll try to keep it short, uh, timestamps and whatnot for each uh, each build, so to speak. So the requirements I will say, if you're gonna request uh, like a build combo you wanna see uh, is armor and weapons, no accessories. So no neck, amulet, and earring because those are just passives overall. They're not like a build defining item that you build around. So like an armor plate, like void dark plate for example is something you could kind of build around right so and weapons as well so that's kind of the criteria if you want to request something but right now we're just going to get into the cooks all right so let's do that uh the first one i have is just a void plate full tank there are definitely builds out there that are better void plate full tank builds okay so if it's too similar and i'm just mission shit and you're about to come in as a hard hat just don't i'm just saying this is what i came up with and i'll explain why and let's get down to it so obviously of your void dark plate uh i chose the onk because as a tank you're probably only pvp as a tank with people around so i feel like having the onk is probably the play there uh as an amulet or an artifact accessory and so that's that uh the weapon artifact i chose was the wall full tank you're not doing no damage. You are full tank. Just remember that this is void plate, full tank, no damage. Got it? Good. So the wall is what I chose for the weapon artifact. And then for your heart rune, chose the stalwart heart rune, heal, fortify, all the goodies. <gasps> I didn't add a perk for that. Whatever. We'll move on. <laughs> uh, for the weapons, I chose the hopolite flail because of the crowded bludgeon and the refreshing move I feel is good depending on what you're trying to do we'll explain that and I chose also the hoplite sword just for the rend and the refreshing move and whatnot so I chose those because you're not doing damage so your attacks when you do attack should do something and I think the thing it should do is reduce the cooldowns on your abilities so you can provide more utility into the fight for whatever you're doing and then we'll work our way up to the top uh, for the earring. Uh, healing heart is probably just staple really good on any earring all the time, always, especially for PvP. And nimble for the stamina regen while you're blocking and doing all this stuff. Regenerating 0.53% health if you're rocking around 30k HP. There's a lot of healing every second. I think that's a good option. There aren't, oops, there aren't many other good options here for PvP that you could really put in here like purifying maybe stuff like that but there ain't a lot so you can't really go wrong here so we're gonna move on <clears throat> for the ring we have hardy for more stamina we have purifying heart to lose all of our debuffs like once you pop this you just have a fresh slate and you start all over again so that's really good to have both the healing and the purifying heart on your for your for your stone form Enfeebling, the base duration of weakens you apply lasts 32% longer. That obviously is going to apply to our flail, and we'll go over that once we get up there. So, 
like I said, I chose the Ankh. Uh, I chose the Perk Refreshing Ward. I don't know if that's even in the game anymore. So this could just all be cooked from the start. Because I don't even know if it's in the game anymore, to be fair. So, and I didn't check. I'm too lazy to check. But if it is in the game, that's what I chose. Because obviously, if you're being hit, reducing your cooldowns is good. And then you have a fresh move, reducing your cooldowns as well. So you're reducing all your cooldowns. Awesome. Let's go into the gear. Uh, I chose tanky stuff, subjective to the taste, depending on preference. Chanted ward, you can go millions of different variations and whatnot, obviously. Refreshing ward, let's just say for hell's sake, what would we choose? I think you just go with conditioning if refreshing ward wasn't a thing, okay? Like you'd go one of these conditionings, you know, if that doesn't work. I chose refreshing ward because I like having my cooldowns and having CDR in my builds. That's a personal preference. That's the only reason they're in there. Because I prefer to have my cooldowns up sooner so I can use them. Chant reward, obviously a self-explanatory, just less damage, health, less. That's perfect. The uh the gems I chose were the uh Malachites, I think. That's what they are. Malachite. So the, the elemental and the physical of damage absorption i just thought stacking those were fine and then i chose the energize for stamina on hit i feel like if you're upping your stamina keeping yourself from exhausted is probably better for a tank than any of the other versions of gem out there because if you're not doing damage you don't want to go damage and if you're not if you're not doing damage you don't want to go siphoning or leech so i feel like the stamina for a tank to regenerate as you hit stuff can't go wrong so that's why I put it there. And I think that's what? One, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's just nine stamina when you hit something. It might save your life. And I don't see another option there for a tank that works out well for that. So that's why I put that there. Uh, freedoms, you have your four freedoms. Uh, once you have four freedom, that puts you at minus 48% CC duration, which is really good for a tank. So you're not CC'd hardly ever if at all so that's pretty much it for the gear we have i just put this on because i think this is really important it's actually way better on the weapon but i chose the hoplite flail for the crowded bludgeon just to have the uh the cooldown reduced by 25 percent. so right there so just an ability and it's for cdr but having this here is not bad either you extend their active cooldowns by 16 percent uh, burning and smite is you can't really go wrong with that so now we're going to get to the part that people are going to have super big problems for that's fine let me cook thanks uh for sword and shield i chose a whirling blade because of the fact when you're in heavy it inflicts a weaken and then you obviously want to have cd so you can just keep applying weaken with the whirling blade you can obviously go shield bass but shield bash is just kind of meh or whatever if you're trying to be a tank a utility tank you don't really need to cc things you're just trying to be there be annoying and be square and then help your team out right so <clears throat> uh the reason i chose sword and shield and flail because i think this perk operates when the weapon's not slotted so you have 15 percent additional armor and then you come up to here right you can see that okay you have reinforced vitality increase your max health by 25 percent of your physical armor rating while the flail is equipped so i think this operates when this is out and then that just gives you a big chunk of extra if it does not, still not a bad perk to go. Can't go wrong. But that was the thinking process behind it. If it doesn't work like that, it's whatever. It's still a good perk on its own. So you can't go wrong. Um, Just went pure, you know, defensive tool here. Uh, full defender's resolve. Because it's really good to have. Your base damage reductions increase by 20% while it's active. And then you heal for 30% of your HP when it's done. Just to get the defensive formation, reduce all the damage with allies with by 30%. It's really good if your allies are inside that circle. They are virtually unkillable or extremely tanky. So that's as a tank, as a utility tank, this is your utility protect your friends part of your build. This is where it's at. Over here is where you're going to apply your debuffs with your flail. Um, I went barrage, just a good all around you can i think you can get away with not having this to put a point there's so many good passives on the flail i know i got the flail part wrong there's probably a professional like flail tank player that probably knows what they're talking about that's probably looking at that like buddy you don't play flail true 
I do not. And the way that I do play is not tank. So there's that. Uh, the ideal goal. So if you're more knowledgeable on the flail and you're seeing this build and it's inspiring you, but you're looking at the flail thing like, ah, frick this guy. He's an idiot. Uh, the ideal for the flail obviously is to apply the weekend, the debuffs and whatnot. And that was the idea for that. So if I did it wrong, I apologize. That's where I chose. That was the thought process. Okay. So before you come at me, obviously you need smite for the birdie needs smite. <clears throat> you need the warding bludgeon for the CDR. Otherwise, this weapon's useless while you're doing that. Right? So. And then you went the tower shield. Crowd control effects reduced on the player by 10%. So you're technically at 58% CC reduction when you have the flail out. So that's good. Uh, you gain 30% fortify when you activate smite, which is good. <clears throat> what else is there? Barrage has grit while you're active. So this is just to apply your debuffs. Uh, add some CC and stagger, uh, put some fortify down. I think this is something that gets removed. I think this is the one that's going to irk people unless this is the, the one or they go trip or they prefer trip. So I don't know. I didn't choose these because I feel like indulging into the passives is a lot beneficial for you as a tank player than it is going into these. So that's just where that's at. That's preference. All right. So, all right, we're done with that. I'm ready to be crucified. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Uh, perk stacks for health, for freedom, for enchanted ward, to a refreshing ward, five energized specter. Uh, it comes out to about 13% magic, about four ish percent there, 45% physical, and then 40% elemental. We're looking at 2600 health right now. Uh, this doesn't include various other buffs, so it's kind of in inaccurate i think you're gonna cap out about 28 to maybe 30k health you might who knows uh let's go to the stats so i can explain the stats because there's like 50 focus what's that obviously you're a tank so as much as you can put in con that you can afford is fine the reason i put 150 into strength is because you have stamina regen while you're exhausted which is a good thing because once say somebody is able to break your block having that extra regen while you're exhausted is probably a good thing to get back up there so you just go back to blocking and there's really nothing else in the strength tree that benefits a tank. You know, like this is all just damage increase, right? And then for decks, like you don't need crit, you don't need base damage at full HP, or you don't need damage to backstab, right? You don't need any of that. So you put a lot of your points into comp just for the HP and the survivability. Uh, you put some focus points in here because of the cooldown reduction. I like CDR, that's the reason it's there. And 10% income in healing as a tank, you're going to be healed. Having more of that, good, right? That makes sense, right? So there's that. The food I chose, obviously, is the con food, just so you can get all the stat points possible into this build. This is a full 725 build, right? So it only works when you have full 725 gear. That's how that's going to work. As you can tell down here, this stuff's at 700. Oh, can you? Will that work? I don't think that does anything though right let's see i mean it moves it moves some things i, I mean it moves some stuff i guess so don't know why this is that whatever that was at okay so i at least you can move it to 725 at least Okay, that's good. The more you know. Okay, so this is the void plate, full plate tank set, whatever. If you like it, that's fine. If you didn't, go ahead and hard hat me in the comments. It's perfect. We're going to now move over to the next one I have for you guys. All right, and if your jimmies weren't rustled enough, we have another one for you. This is the medium Serenity Great Sword of Tune Pants build. Ooh, with the hatchet. I chose the hatchet because I'm gonna opt in for this build for the serenity to be more of a defensive tool as we go into steadfast strike and roaring rupture with a relentless rush uh, on top of that you can probably just go full uh, skyward slash just for the utility and in the disease but i opted for the disease in the infected throw for the hatchet so that's why i went relentless rush because there's a perk if i have it <coughs> where are you mr perk did I put the perk away? Oh, I didn't. I didn't choose that perk. 
I wasn't gonna think like there was the relentless rush per that removes root and stuns and whatnot, but I already have the CC duration on the freedom choice. So that's why I didn't choose that perk. Anyways, let's go ahead and start from the bottom. Uh, I went cunning heart rune of detonate because you have 50% extra damage. You have 30% move speed. So you're kind of like using it to chase people down with your hatchet and running them down and killing them. Uh, I chose the hoplite hatchet because of the disdained infliction. And I personally like on the great sword, this perk where your charged heavy attacks have grit and inflict bleeding. I think that's just a staple anyways. People go that regardless, but you have bleeding there. You're going to have bleeding here and whatnot. And then your outgoing dots are going to be 50% stronger and they're going to be longer. So just having more bleeds on the person is probably a good thing. That's why I chose this hatchet. And then you obviously have your serenity. You're going to be touching into the defense more often than you are the offense, obviously, because you only have one ability on the offense. And we did not spec into the uh, inter onslaught stance by the charged heavy attack. So uh, you'll just be getting fortified each each hit. You're kind of just using this like if they collapse on you, they want to turn and fight. You can just use this to fight back with them. Get, make sure your uh, hatchet ability is back up and running and then switch over and start pumping them down. Right. Um, for the earring, kind of standard, you're probably going to see these a lot come back uh, as we go through these cookings, because earrings, <clears throat> my opinion on the earring is I prefer combat stats that affect you without having conditions. So if you think about it here, when you drink a potion, you might have a chance that it doesn't consume. Or your consumables, this one's kind of okay, I prefer, I like this one too. Uh, your consumable cooldowns reduced by 10 percent that's fine or when you drink a regen you lose one debuff you know or on potion again 20 percent fortify or empower again 10 percent of power when you drink a potion like people like that that's fine that's your preference i like <clears throat> forget about it combat stats so refreshing regen healing heart are kind of like my bread and butter that i prefer that's what i prefer that's fine for you you can choose whatever you want that's what i prefer we went slash gems here on the rings just to have the 10% slash damage absorption when you're fighting somebody. <coughs> For the uh, ring, we went slash damage because both of your things here are slash and your whole goal here is to run people down and kill them while being just a little bit more tanky than light players. They're like, wait, if you're trying to run people down and kill them, why don't you just go light, idiot? Well, because uh, this is a medium attuned leather pants build. That's why. Got it. Anyways, moving on. I just prefer having Purifying and Healing Heart on both. You just can't go wrong, and they're really good to have. Hardy as well, really good to have. <clears throat> I chose Phoenix because if you, I don't know if it works. I don't know if it works. If it does, you have two of these. You want to make sure Defy Death, I think. Oh, I don't. Okay, so I think what's going to happen there is that these both are going to proc at the same time. So that might happen. We'll see. But the issue is, is this is a 180 second cooldown. So that might have that first inter initial interaction, which is fine, I guess. And then after that, you can have another defy death 60 seconds later. And then they'll just uh, switch out on each other later on into the fights that you're having. Okay, so at first it's going to get muddy. And then afterwards, it's not. It should be fine. It should be fine. I didn't think about that. I didn't know if these were proc at the same time. They might do that. They might do that. They might do that. We'll see, you know? But I like it. Uh, you're at least every minute guaranteed to defy death situation. And then at this one, you get full HP. Blah, blah, blah. Until you die or get a kill, you know? That's what I chose that. The other options would probably be the Endless Thirst over here. <clears throat> like the Stronger, whatnot. You have your Empowering, Fortifying Toast. Uh, I don't think there's a ring here that's good. That's the only problem. You know, when you hit a target with Elemental Damage, you can gain Empower. So if you put in an Elemental Gem thing or whatnot, and you're, you know, whatever. We'll just leave it at that. Um, but I think the only good accessory is probably phoenix or Onk, unfortunately or the uh, endless thirst over here anyways we're gonna move on uh we are at 22.2 weight so we have the light boots uh punishing for the plus one percent melee damage and i like all uh, the, the opals i'm an opal gamer 
Cyber for Opals. We have a Fire Ward on the Phoenix for the 6% fire damage. Uh, we have an Opal here, 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 here. And then our defenses are going to be, you know, 10% magic, 16% fire on top. And then 10% slash, 15 physical elemental, and wada yada yada yada. We have four refreshing, four enchanted ward, four freedom, two slashing conditionings, and then five punishing elemental. Is our perk stacks. Wait, am I over indexed? Where is that bastard? Where the heck? One. No, two. No. Three. Yeah, it's right here. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Okay, that's what I did. I oopsied. We're fine though. We found the oopsie. Yeah, so I chose a refreshing recovery. When your health drops below 50%, all your active cooldowns are reset. So all of it lets you decide what that does for yourself. Okay, so for Hatchet, obviously, uh, you don't play Hatchet if you're not going Berserk. That's kind of like the point of the weapon to get to defy death as well. We went Raging Torrent because of here. Each attack of your Raging Torrent reduces all your cooldowns. And you know how I feel about cooldowns. I like my cooldowns, so there's that. We chose Infected Throw for the disease and get a few of these perks. So that's what that build's going to look like. Uh... You know, your increased melee attack chance, critical hits with light attacks, name throws or generate stamina. Uh, attacks deal 10% with additional debuffs or your infected throw. You're keenly jagged, to name a few. Uh, weaken, you'll get weakened as well. Uh, dodging within two seconds of hitting a target with an ability consumes 20% less stamina. Ba -ba -da -bum. Hitting a target gives you haste. Uh, remove all bleeds and poison effects from yourself if you hit an enemy while your stuff is below 30%. So you have that. You also have this at 50%. So you have two cleanses on you already as well. You get a stamina recovery as well at 50%. Everything is good. Like once you get 50%, you're in like you're in your like little you're you're, you're in heaven so to speak. So we're gonna move over to the great sword. Uh, Roaring Rupture is a niche ability that some people like. Some people hate really just depends you get the another cleanse on your debuff uh you get 10 percent weaken on the targets and you become interruptible which is really cool to have because you can resituate yourself in the fight if you need to this is a free just get out of jail free card and i like that we went to here because like i said we're going to be utilizing serenity as a more defensive option so we're going to be healing for our attacks we have Faultless Defender. Faultless Defender is a super underrated perk with a super high skill ceiling because it requires you to be able to have your charged heavy attacks at the right moment. Because if you if you go to here, after completing the ability and it's, or whatever, you get defined stances of the following properties. Uh, block incoming attacks while charging heavies. So with this combined with this, you can literally hit people while you're blocking damage. And then it's super good to have. People underrate this perk, but it, if you were able to master this perk in this tree, you're virtually unkillable, practically unkillable, like robotically unkillable. And then you have this, you can now block 100% of the range attacks while you're using a greatsword. Also applies Ren to them. Little, uh, little whoop whoop. AGS didn't think about that, did they? No, they did not. Uh, you have a debuff cleanse here after you do your final hit of your attack chain. Steadfast, also another debuff cleanse. You get your bleeds and your heal. Uh, it reduces all your cooldown abilities by 20%. I think we have Steadfast. Yeah, we have it on the weapon. Each attack of Steadfast reduces your debuff duration by 66. So you just have a shit ton of debuffs and cleanses, which is really good to have that I prefer. Heavy Blade, charged heavy attacks. 50% armor pen, always good to have. Uh, become energized, so you get five stamina and health every time you crit. Crit chance is increased by 10% when attacking foes with a debuff, which you're gonna have. And then you have relentless rush to give you the empower and to heal you in defiant stance if you need to get out. So if this is not working out for you, you need to get out and reset, then you can heal for the 50% of the damage it provides. That's where that goes for the thought process. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and check attributes i think i went dex food actually i went dex food right 
Yeah, that's a dex food. That's a dex looking food right there. Uh, we went 100 strength just for the 10% physical damage. Uh, the main point of your damage is going to be through your hatchet. So you're going to go into dex more often. Plus at 300 dex, you get a free cleanse of all stun and crowd control abilities for 30 seconds when you weapon swap. That's why that's there. Uh, you get 10% of power after you dodge an attack, which synergizes with your dodging uh, passives on your hatchet perks. 10% bonus backstab and headshot damage. Very good because you're going to be chasing people down, so you're going to be hitting them in the back more often than not. 50% uh, duration of overtime effects with your bleeds in, uh, included with the fact that you have disdain infliction, so it's another 30%, 20% roughly, okay? And then 15% base damage while stamina is not full. Your stamina will probably not be full in this build. So extra 5% damage can't go wrong. Um, here is just whatever. I think 250 con is a good sweet spot for a build like this. If you're in medium, you're not going to be as mobile. So you need more con. That kind of just where the sense falls into place, right? And the whole point of the attuned leather pants is the fact that you get an additional, you know, 10% to all. You just get 10 extra points. So technically you're getting plus 30 points for free which is really good and this is what gives you the numbers that you're able to get here you can obviously put these 23 points into strength if you want it's just the fact that dex or the hatchet scales harder with dex than it does with strength so that's where we're at for that <clears throat> that's the overall build for the medium medium serenity attuned pants i didn't know what to call it so i just called it that the void full tank build it had its own name so it's cool the last one has its own pretty cool name, so we're going to go with that. Uh, let me know what you think about this build in the comments, and if the cook was a good cook, or if we cooked with the Phoenix of Defy Death, activating at the same time. Who knows? Anyways, we'll go ahead and go to the next one. All right. Uh, the most controversial of the three, and it's the last one. All right. <clears throat> we're just uh we'll, let's just go in it uh it's called the unyielding venom zoner disruptor with the spear let the boy cook let us start from the bottom okay the heart rune i chose for this build was the grasping runes or, or vines heal for 20 percent of your damage done to rooted targets uh you also get weakened for 20 percent for eight seconds just a big aoe root and it's amazing for three seconds unless they have freedom that's like 1.5 ish 1.6 of a root but anyways <clears throat> having a root is really good for the build that we're going to be doing here warhammer and you're like why we'll go on uh disdain infliction for the hoplite warhammer potency of outgoing dots increased by 50 percent hitting the target inflicted by your dots will extend the duration of them by one percent or by five percent one second cooldown there is a pve only thing that doesn't matter uh, we went with Sundering Clear Out onto the Hammer because it reduces the target's armor by 24%. Just a preference. And then we went Venom. Why did we go Venom? Because our heavy melee attacks with either weapon causes poison damage dealing 50% damage for 5 seconds. I think that synergizes really well with the Warhammer. And for being a Zoner Disruptor type build, you can't really go wrong with pairing these two weapons together. They work well together, and these two weapons, I think, synergize the best with each other together. So that's why I put them together. Obviously, your heavy melee attacks with trench and crits do more damage. Heavy melee damage deals more damage, of course. So you're just heavy attacking on both of these weapons anyways. So synergizing them together to be the best that they can be together makes perfect sense, right? I went Leeching Cyclone onto the Venom just for the 65% uh, of the weapon damage, max three targets. Just a good little heal. Right, because you're in there, you're in the zone, you're disrupting, auto zone, get some heals, having some self-sustain, can't go wrong. <clears throat> Next, we're going to move on to the earring. The earring is kind of self-explanatory. If you've watched the other two builds so far, you kind of know where my opinions are at with that. I just like healing heart. I did not go... <clears throat> I did not go purifying here for the very simple reason is having as much CDR crammed into this build with a spear is absolutely broken okay actually i lied we can i don't know why there's slash damage there but it was okay i don't know why there was slash damage there but there was we are good now so my ring earring combo is complete you have nimble hardy refreshing refreshing healing purifying perfect 
my opals because I'm an opal gamer. That's just what I prefer to have. And then Phoenix, we have our get out of jail free card. I kind of want to switch this up. I think Ankh might just be objectively better for the build that we're trying to go for here, just in the context of what you're doing. Because if you're playing this type of build, you're probably playing this with other players. You know, you're not doing this like a one-on-one. -on -one. You're not hunting people down. You're not trying to kill them. You're just trying to be very, very threatening in the zone. So I think having more incoming healing come your way is probably a lot better than Phoenix would be. Just a preference. <clears throat> uh, we are going to index into our gear and a lot of the uh, dodge perks. So shirking heals in port. When you dodge, you heal and then you get armor with refreshing on top. We have slash conditioning here because you can only have four refreshing. So once we run out of uh, refreshing like here, then we just go slash conditioning on top just to have that good, nice, flat damage absorption. Uh, I think we opal everything on this build just because I prefer to have that. You're already going to be very tanky with the hammer and the shirkin fort, the shirkin heals and the slash conditioning that I think indexing heavier into the elemental protection is probably a good move for that. So, and unyielding the PVP only is received 20% less damage from critical hits and the helm weight is reduced by six. So you can go a little bit heavier <clears throat> on your stuff. So instead of going well, it's kind of like the same, exact same as a, uh, what you might call it, as a bruiser build, if you think about it, because it's heavy helm, heavy chest, medium gloves, light legs. But you would, instead of going uh, light uh, feet, you go, yeah, you go light feet here instead of medium. So you get this extra armor here, I guess, for whatever, you know what it is. But you get a, you get a decent amount of armor. You're almost up to 2K, and it'll be going up higher as you are dodging around with Shirking Fort. And we'll explain why we went shirking and dodge. Obviously, if you know, spear is really good with stamina regen and management. So having a lot of ability or perks that synergize with that uh, is a good thing. You can't go wrong with that. Okay. So for a Warhammer, we are going to be using it as crowd control for the most part. Do I? Am I trolling? I don't think I'm trolling. Okay, I decided against that because I was like, did I not go Path of Destiny? But it's like, what's the point of Path of Destiny, right? Uh, armor Breakers are only offensive tool on the Warhammer, and that's just for the rend that it applies. <laughs> we have Shockwave for the weekend. We have Clear Out with the Sunder Clear Out, which reduces their armor by 24%. Okay, and then whenever a target is hit by an ability, they're slowed by 20%. Heal for their purpose of the damage when using a crowd crusher ability. Just a little bit of added sustain in there. Heavy attacks reduce the cooldown with the grit, of course. Heavy attack damage against targets under 30% health. Uh, all hammer abilities add to exhaust and gain a power on heavy attacks. Like I said, you're just heavy attacking, we're trying to synergize them together the best they can, and we're going to have some zone control when we're doing it. So. Uh, Spear is probably going to be your main weapon utilization here just because you have so much CDR into this build that these are going to be popping off on you left and right and center. So it might be even too much CDR, but that was the whole design of the build. That's why we put it in there. Uh, you have your Vault Kick, gain in power on a kick, reduces all your cooldowns by 30% on a successful hit. Very good. First hit with an ability within two seconds of dodging, 20% CDR. Critical chance is increased by 50% <clears throat> when attacking a bleeding target. Walla walla, what do you know? Anyways, critical hits and send the durations of your spear debuffs like this. <clears throat> Heal 50% increased damage against targets less than 30% health just to finish them off. I just added this because not, this wasn't really like my thing. So just having this on there for more CDR, why not? Uh, Cyclone <clears throat> for the obvious. You restore 25 stamina, so it's 50 stamina per. And then you now push the targets back. You also have leeching. So you're kind of seeing where it's kind of coming along. Successful heavy attacks reduce all your spook cooldowns by 15%, which is really good to have, especially if you're doing heavy attacks anyways. Your next dodge consumes 20% less stamina <clears throat> for two seconds after a successful hit. Stamina regen increased by 30% after a critical hit. Heavy attacks give you fortify. And then stamina regen is increased by 30%. When you're, so you kind of understand where it's going. You're building stamina, crowd controlling people with sweep and bolt kick, 
you're blowing your hammer CDs once they're up or you clear out if you need space. Other than that, you're staking onto the spear. You're dodging for your armor and heals. You're never running out of stamina. Supposedly, you're not supposed to run out of stamina with this build. Theoretically, you're not. So with that said, we're going to move on to the perk stacks. You have four refreshing, three slash. You have five shirking. I don't know if you can go five shirking, four and heals. So it increases armor by 26% for four seconds. And then you heal for 20, 12, 50 and 75% of your max health. Okay. That's a pretty decent heal every seven seconds. Not bad. Uh, it's 7% power because of hunting stones, whatever. Like I said, we over indexed into elemental because of all the shirking port we're going to have, anyways. It doesn't really make sense to do that. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead, show off the attributes. We went 50 strength just for the 10% heavy attack damage. You can probably go another 50 just for the physical damage itself. So maybe you want to get rid of this. But the only reason I have 300 con is if you're performing heavy attacks, having grit when you're charging and performing the heavy attack makes sense right uh gain 10 percent in power for three seconds after su successfully dodging an attack you can make a case to like lose some of this to be honest like you could what oh this is the magnify so i think we'd have to what rotate this over like this <laughs> not like that um where is it Duration over time effects. Do that for the physical damage. Something like that. And then we'd have to... What? Backstep and headshot damage. So you could do something like that. We'll get to get rid of that food, though. It's just a, too much con, actually. You have to move the con around, okay? So there's that. So there's like... A, yeah. So you could also... Let's just do that. Like, you want to make sure you get 300 con. 300 con's fine, okay? You could sacrifice some of this stuff here to get, you know, up to here, like 150. So maybe you just go 150, 150 for each. But, yeah, because this stuff is kind of okay. It's meh, right? So you can kind of go boom to boom, right? You know, have 150. So you have the stamina regen while you're exhausted, if you get exhausted, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That preference is here, you know, wherever you can maximize the damage out. So the whole the whole point of this build not really is to kill people fast and heavy, but to whittle them down and then stay alive longer than they're staying alive, obviously. You're going to kill them. You're going to kill them eventually. You're going to sustain yourself. You're pretty good on your own, but you're you can get the heals coming from your teammates if you need it. But you're pretty good on your own. You can handle yourself in the zone. Auto zone. So that's kind of the design of the build. And then eventually you're just going to whittle them down to the point they don't even want to fight you anymore. And that's the point, because if you control the zone, you win. You just did your roll completely. So that was that. We are almost at 40 minutes. Um, if there are any weapons and armor combinations that you want me to draft something and cook for, let me know. I'll try to do three per, and that'll be it. So with that said, we will see you guys in the next one.